In my last video, we looked at some tech that you use every day that is commonly overlooked. And this video continues that theme with the keyboard. I'm Dion from Dion Video Productions, and today we're looking at my keyboard of choice, the Apple Magic Keyboard. Let's get started. The Magic Keyboard comes in two variants. There's this standard silver version coming in at 99 US dollars, and a version with numeric keypad available in both silver and space gray, coming in at 129 and 149 US dollars respectively. Looking at the box, we have clean and minimalistic classic Apple packaging. Sliding open the box reveals the Magic Keyboard up front and center with a pull tab to lift. Underneath, we have a USB-A to lightning cable. Nice to see that they included this, but I do wish it was USB-C instead. And finally, we have our user guide and warranty info. No Apple stickers. Now let's unwrap the keyboard. Looks great. Let's take a closer look. The Apple Magic Keyboard thankfully features a reliable scissor switch mechanism that, unlike the butterfly mechanism, can stand up to more than a speck of dust. The keyboard looks great, features a solid aluminum structure that has no flex and has a tapered design similar to that of the MacBook Air. The minimalistic design allows for a small footprint, taking up less space on your desk compared to, say, other keyboards while still including, of course, full-size keys. The back houses the lightning port used for charging and the power switch. On the bottom, we have four rubber feet that effectively keep the keyboard on your desk. Now, as someone who primarily uses a MacBook, buying an external keyboard is not a must. However, these days, with most of us working from home, I found that this makes a massive difference in productivity, posture, and overall comfort, turning my 15-inch MacBook Pro to more of a desktop machine. The keyboard connects via Bluetooth and therefore can also be connected to your phone or iPad. Speaking of which, for iPad, while this keyboard may not replace Apple's iPad-specific Magic Keyboard, it certainly does work very well, especially if you already have a smart cover. This is a great, relatively cost-effective way to add a full-size keyboard to your iPad. So how does it type? Of course, this is somewhat subjective, however, I find this to be an excellent type. The scissor switches provide what is for me the perfect amount of key travel. The keyboard is quiet, much quieter compared to the MacBook. Have a listen. After having used the Apple Butterfly keyboard on my MacBook Pro for the past two years, going back to a scissor switch mechanism, I find myself enjoying this more and more each day. Honestly, it makes me miss the keyboards Apple included in their older MacBooks. Which is why I'm all the more happy that Apple has now went back to including a scissor switch mechanism on their new 16-inch model MacBook Pros. The Magic Keyboard features a row of function keys that are the same size as the lettered keys. This effectively keeps the design consistent, but will take a little bit of time to get used to, as by feel, the function keys feel just like any other key. Starting on the left, we have a large escape key, brightness controls, mission control, launch pad, media controls, volume, and finally, an eject key. Coming from the touch bar, it is refreshing to be able to access simple functions like volume control with one click. The battery life on this keyboard has been great, lasting me around 8 to 10 weeks. It can be used while charging and charges in less than 2 hours. In terms of customization on macOS under system preferences, then keyboard, we see the battery stat and various controls. When pairing this keyboard to your Mac, your preset key repeat settings will automatically carry over. So overall, is it worth it? Well, the starting price of 99 US dollars is not cheap. If you're looking for a more affordable option, I suggest looking at keyboards from, for example, Logitech. However, if you want a keyboard that will fit in with Apple's design aesthetic, is well-built and reliable, then this is an excellent buy, making it my keyboard of choice. I personally suggest getting the standard Magic Keyboard seen here over the version with numeric pad unless you specifically need this feature, as this saves some money and takes up less room on your desk. I do hope that all versions of the next Magic Keyboard are available in Space Gray to match your Mac's aesthetic even more and some backlit keys, that'd be great too. I hope this video can help you out with your buying decision. All the best to everyone working from home and stay safe. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments and let me know what keyboard do you guys use. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching.